Well, hello and welcome to a very wintry St George's Hill where Tony Wrighton and I are to look back on some of the best bits of 2013 because this is the last golfing world show of the year. But what a year it's been, Tony. What have been your best bits? Oh, it has been fantastic. I mean, Phil Mickelson's final day charge at Muirfield, that'll live long in the memory. The Solheim Cup, which I thought was really compelling viewing. And then from an amateur perspective, the weather was so good this summer, wasn't it? I know it's hard to remember now, <laughs> but it was a wonderful summer. We all got out, played lots of golf, and that's what I remember about 20. 2013. Yeah, I think some people had the handicaps cut more than others, but it was a fantastic year. And without doubt, the best moment for me was seeing our very own Justin Rose win his first yeah. major championship and indeed England's first in 17 years. What an achievement. Well, I was lucky enough to catch up with the man himself as he played a practice round out in Dubai. And here's what he had to say. Justin Rose. Thanks for joining us on Golfing World. We're going to walk the course. Let's get going. Perfect. Last time I walked a hole with you was at the HSBC Champions last year. That's right. A heck of a lot has changed since then. You must be a very happy man. One major thing stands out this season, but how would you sum up your year so far in 2013? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's, it's been uh, another good year, a great year. I mean, I think uh, any time you win a major championship, I mean, you've heard it from Tiger, you've heard it from pretty much every player that plays. If you win a major, it's a great year almost, no matter what else happens. So uh, that's the lucky position I'm in. And uh, I feel like my career, I've been fortunate enough to sort of have progressed nicely the last three or four years, winning bigger and bigger tournaments. And coming into this year, that was my line. It was one, you know, big events in America. I've won WGC now and next step's a major. And, Pretty happy that I was, uh, I was able to chalk it off quite quickly. So, Marion, going into that final round. Yep. How are you feeling before that final Sunday, and what's your game plan going into that last round? I had a good game plan. I felt like I really understood Marion. I knew what it took to play that course well, and I think that's where a lot of guys got caught out. They maybe played the course too aggressively or pressed in wrong in the wrong areas, and I felt that I learned to play the course the week before the US Open. Fuchs and I went up there for three days and really mapped the place out and really did a good recce of it. The preparation felt really good to us. I felt like it was so much easier to learn the course away from all the, the razzmatazz of a tournament where it was quiet. We were the only guys out there. You could really get down to business and learn it. What would you hit here, Kara? Yeah. Six iron? Six, yes. I'll hit an upside down six. Okay. <laughs> a nine. Look at that. I think it could be decent. I think it's a bit harder now. Nine iron, look at that. I mean, I take, it's different for girls and boys. That's before you Should even get a six. special and amateur status. Maybe a nine. You finished on 18, one over par. Your plan, you told me, was to finish level par. Yeah. It was too early to definitely know, to celebrate. You still made a nice gesture to the sky we've all seen. What did you honestly believe in yourself when you finished 18? I thought I'd won it, um, but like you said, it was too early to be running around the green like a madman celebrating. But the gesture to the sky was the fact that I felt like I'd gone out and done everything I could of that day. And obviously that's the type of performance that would have made my dad proud. It was the type of performance that I was proud of. And hopefully it was the type of performance that my boy Leo, or children being Father's Day, could look up to and be proud of too. So um, especially with Phil, you just never really know what, what can happen. and. Um, even over the last chip shot, if there's one guy in the world that could make it, it's probably him. And as soon as he hit it and I saw the ball check on the downslope, I knew it was going to be close. But obviously that green runs away so steeply, the ball never just really got going slow enough. And uh, poor Kate didn't really know what was going on, actually. Because <laughs> um, Fooch had figured out, because he heard the noise of the off Phil's chip miss, and there was about a seven second delay on what was going on on the TV. So. Uh, I kind of celebrated because Fuji told me we've won, we've won, and then Kate's like, but, but, but Phil's chipping still. So there was kind of a couple of second delay in there, but it was all good fun. Justin, it's absolutely fantastic to see you as a major winner. Best of luck in 2014. Let's thank hope you, there's many more to come. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That's where the ball landed. Good club, Cara. There we go. We always like a bird. Thank you. The <laughs> see you soon. All right. See you guys.